How does what is what does Superman represent to people? Um, a friend, and that's what people really need most. We're living in an age when people are basically afraid of contact with each other. They're afraid people live in cities, they don't even know their neighbors. They're afraid to go out in the street, something might happen to them. Basically, technology is against you, life is overwhelming. And I think that is that kind of virtue that's at the bottom. That's, that's the heart of Superman. All right, we are here. It is the first video of DC Prime. I, I'm so excited to share this with you guys. If you don't know what I'm talking about, long story short of it is me and a group of creators. We are getting together to create our own DC Cinematic Universe, doing pitch videos and all that. We've been working so, so hard for the past month and a half-ish on this now. I have an announcement video for it on my channel. It's the last thing I posted. Yeah, so without any further delay, here is my pitch for Superman Genesis. Wait, pause, hold on. Sorry, I, I hate to do this to you guys, but I'm going to go over casting. So I'm going to start it with Lois Lane. I'm going to be picking Emma Mackey for this. So for Lex Luthor, I'm going to be going with Michael Fassbender. The main villain of this movie is going to be Livewire. And for that character, I decided to go with Kristen Stewart. Now for Superman himself. This is a big one. I have scoured the internet. I have gone to every single corner. I'm going to be using David Corrin sweat. Stop yelling at me. Calm down. Let me explain. Okay, thank you. I'm talking to the wall right now. There's nothing there's nothing behind my camera. I'm telling you guys, he is so perfect. There is nobody who's gonna play it as good as David Corrin Sweat. Just just look at him! Look at him! Look at him! I, I don't I don't even know what else to say. This is just I Okay, anyways, you guys don't wanna hear me blab on about casting any longer. I'm gonna try and keep this short. Enjoy my pitch for Superman Genesis. Fade in, the scene unfolds amidst a picturesque wheat field bathed in the golden hues of dawn. A sense of warmth and familiarity envelops the vast expanse evoking a feeling of homecoming. Under the canopy of azure sky adorned with clouds as pristine as freshly fallen snow, we glimpse young Clark Kent, a mere 11 or 12 years of age, dashing with youthful exuberance. Martha Kent sits on the front porch, a beacon of maternal warmth while Jonathan tends to the track nearby. Clark bounds up the steps, greeted by his mother's loving embrace. Amidst shared laughter and smiles, the family basks in the idyllic moment, a fleeting glimpse of perfection akin to a scene from a fairy tale. With a fatherly gesture, Jonathan kneels before Clark as he says, I love you, son. Clark's smile radiates with reciprocated affection as the scene gently fades. Fast forward to an older Clark, now 25, clad in a somber black suit, standing beneath an umbrella amidst a bleak downpour. Beside him, Martha's grief is palpable as tears cascade down her cheeks. The setting reveals as a solemn cemetery where they stand by a grave. Etched upon the headstone are the words Jonathan Kent, loving husband, caring father. Together, they depart from the scene, leaving behind memories as our title card fades onto the screen. This story is going to be an origin in practice, but it's not really going to feel like an origin. I think for that origin story, we can showcase it similar to the way that All-Star Superman does and the way that the Raimi Spider-Man movies did. It just, it gets it all out of the way, it doesn't take up time, and we can just play it in the back of the opening credits because that's honestly kind of genius. For hypothetical sake, we can bring back some incredible Superman artists, and each one can do a different, like, picture of each important part of Superman's origin story, like him being sent away from Krypton, or him finding the Fortress of Solitude, him growing up essentially. We also get one of him moving to Metropolis, and the final one is him flying high above the clouds, way above Metropolis. He is Superman. We fixate on the concluding image which springs to life. Our perspective shifts to the heavens alongside Superman. He streaks through the air with wind blowing through his hair while his cape billows gracefully behind him, imbuing us with a sense of vitality. He glides majestically above the clouds, synchronizing our breaths with his own. As Superman descends towards the streets, now within public view, we observe the citizens of Metropolis gazing skyward in awe. Their exuberant cheers, smiles, and waves greet him as he traverses the urban skyline. A bond of adoration and ensues as Superman reciprocates their affection with warm gestures before resuming his journey. Amidst his flight, he hears sounds of distress, a young girl sobs emanating from beneath a tree. Superman floats down beside her, stooping to her eye level with a loving smile. What's wrong, Cassie? 
His familiarity with her name is unsurprising. Superman strives to really know those he helps. The child points upward where a stranded cat awaits rescue. He gently retrieves the feline and returns her to Cassie's embrace. Grateful, the child enfolds Superman with a heartfelt hug before bidding him farewell. Subsequently, we find Clark Kent at the bustling offices of the Daily Planet, where he encounters Lois Lane. Goodness, Clark, finally! We should have been on our way to the live wire ten minutes ago. Caught off guard, Clark is startled, tipping over his own chair. Lois, ever perceptive, offers a playful jest amidst the haste. You're like a bull in a china shop, Smallville. Some people are starting to think you got two left feet. You might be onto something. I suppose I'm no Superman. Lois rolls her eyes and chuckles. Come on, we gotta go. Transitioning to a recording studio, we witness Clark and Lois engaging in a podcast interview with Leslie Willis, host of The Live Wire. The discussion revolves around Superman, with Willis adamantly calling the hero a fraud, an emblem of unearned privilege and unchallenged success. And those are our first couple scenes. Superman is such a cool character, and it, he's not about how hard he can punch a supervillain. It's all about his guiding forces, and those two guiding forces are his mother and Lois Lane. So what is the story of this movie? Well, the core of this movie is that relationship between Superman and Lois. Throughout this movie, we're gonna be able to see that relationship develop. There is an electricity malfunction and Superman swoops in to try and save Leslie from it, but the electricity passes through his Kryptonian cells into hers and mutates her and it transforms her into Livewire. The second act commences with Leslie's hospitalization, followed by her escape and subsequent vow for vengeance against Superman. However, this marks only the initial phase of the narrative. At the midpoint, a clash ensues between Superman and Livewire. Exploiting Livewire's vulnerability to water, Superman strategically relocates the battle to a nearby beach. Ultimately, Superman subdues Leslie by submerging her in water, temporarily neutralizing her powers and leading to her arrest. Then the narrative shifts to focus to the true antagonist, Lex Luthor. Recognizing Leslie's distaste towards Superman, Luther manipulates her as a pawn in his plan to eliminate the Man of Steel and become the true savior of Metropolis. Lex Luthor has always been such an interesting villain to me. I mean, he doesn't see himself as the villain, which just makes him even more dangerous. I mean, unlike someone like, I don't know, the Joker, he thinks that what he is doing is genuinely right and heroic. He truly believes that everything he does is for the good of Metropolis. The only problem with that is that he also thinks that he's the only one allowed to save Metropolis. If Metropolis is going to be saved, it's it's gonna be him. So, when someone like Superman shows up, Lex kinda take it personally. He didn't let that slide. Also, I wanted to make sure that this Lex Luthor is gonna be around for a while, so this Lex will appear in a lot of DC Prime projects, so get used to seeing Lex Luthor, because he is a very, very integral part of this universe. Act 3 opens with a pivotal moment as Luther pays a visit to Leslie in prison, presenting an offer of assistance. Recognizing an opportunity to neutralize Superman's growing public influence, Luther proposes to equip Leslie with the technology capable of enhancing her abilities to the extent of defeating Superman. Additionally, he assures her of avoiding further incarceration. Before we arrive at the climax, a necessary task awaits Clark. In a scene at Lois's apartment, Clark arrives and Lois opens the door. Hi Lois, there's something I need to tell you. The narrative shifts to the Fortress of Solitude, where Superman accompanies Lois. They eventually arrive on the roof and sit as they look to the sky at the northern lights as a gentle snowfall dots the sky. Lois asks why he's telling her this now, and Superman explains that he needs to help someone. He isn't sure if he'll be able to, but he has to try, even if it means he won't come back. Tears well in Lois's eyes, but she wipes them away. She stands up and tells Superman that he'll be back. She's positive. Superman asks how she knows, but Lois tells him one thing. Because I'll be waiting for you. Superman smiles and stands. I know you will. He turns to leave, but Lois grabs his hand. Clark, I... I want to say thank you. Superman pulls her in close and they kiss under the northern lights. Superman lets go of Lois and steps back. I'll see you soon, Lois. His smile stretches across the world and fills Lois, fills us with warmth, with comfort. He turns and looks to the sky as he blasts off into the air. Lois watches as the peaceful snowfall covers her face. A thousand thoughts run through her head, but only one emotion fills her heart. Hope.
At this point in the story, we have developed Clark and Lois's relationship enough to the point where this movie has earned the emotional payoff rather than just shoving it down our throats and telling us to accept it. I made sure to place this scene underneath the northern lights because that'll give me the ability to change how the scene looks and the coloring of the scene, kind of similar to Gwen Stacy's world in Across the Spider-Verse. And we have now established the stakes for this final battle. It's not the destruction of the city, but we fear for Lois's heart. We fear for Superman because when it's all said and done, Lois Lane isn't just a love interest. She's our POV character. Lois Lane is us. We aren't Superman. We aren't Jimmy Olsen. We are Lois Lane. She is the grounded anchor in this world of gods and aliens and other monsters. In the climactic confrontation between Superman and Livewire, the scene unfolds not in a spectacle of destruction, but rather in a display of compassion and restraint. Throughout the entirety of the encounter, Superman refrains from throwing a single punch, opting instead to use a strategy centered on healing and assistance rather than inflicting harm. In a heartfelt moment, Superman reaches out to Livewire, conveying that retribution is not the answer she seeks, but rather understanding and support. As Livewire's powers fade, she succumbs to her emotions as she kneels in tears. You don't need to worry. I'm here for you. A few hours later, Superman floats outside of the windows of the top floor penthouse at LexCorp Tower. Luthor approaches the window. I suspect you can hear me through this glass. My front door is open if you'd be so inclined to talk face to face. After a moment, the office doors open and Superman walks in. And now, it's time for the real final battle. What did you do to her? Who? Leslie Willis, what did you do to her? Ah yes, the podcast host. She was a means to an end at best. She's a person, a victim of you. Leslie Willis is a victim of you, Superman. I simply gave her the opportunity of revenge. You used her for your own gain. What are you after? Oh, Superman. Too busy flying above that you're blind to see those on the ground. Predictable. I won't let you hurt people just to get to me. I'll always be around to stop you. To save them from you. I'll be waiting. Superman turns to leave. You aren't the savior of Metropolis you think you are. Maybe you could be if you put others before your own ego. With that, the Man of Steel leaves. Luthor looks out his window to see Superman soar off into the sky. His smirk fades as he grabs a glass and pours a drink. He takes a sip, then smashes the glass onto the desk in an act of rage. The glass shards, cutting his hand in the process. He looks at his palm to see blood. Luthor chuckles, knowing that that's something he can do that Superman can't. The concluding sequences commence with Lois Lane returning to the offices of the Daily Planet, where she writes a compelling article regarding Superman. Subsequently, a monologue accompanies the closing imagery as Superman gracefully traverses the bustling streets of Metropolis, warmly acknowledging the citizens he encounters. We also see a composed Lex Luthor observing a news broadcast detailing Superman's heroic intervention in rescuing Livewire. Our closing scene is Clark visiting his father's grave once more. He kneels down and places his hand on the grave, just as his father had done for him all those years ago. I love you, Dad. Hope I made you proud. Clark stands and turns to see Lois holding a bouquet of flowers. Clark smiles and Lois places the flowers on Jonathan's grave. She takes Clark's hand and rests her head on his shoulder. And that is the first movie of DC Prime. I hope you guys really enjoyed it because I loved making this. I hope you guys like the new content style that I'm doing. I know it's a little different. You guys aren't used to seeing my face, but kind of want to try this out. If you guys want more information on DC Prime, you can join the link below. It is my Discord server. You guys can get all of the information there. You can also apply to become a writer for DC Prime. If you are a content creator and you love these characters and you want to be a part of something this big, we have an application for DC Prime. You can fill out that application and we will read every application and we will get back to you if you are accepted to become a writer for this project. The next video in DC Prime will be on Mason the Nerds channel and that video will be our introduction to Batman with Batman Dying City. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe to him so that you don't miss that and that's about it for me so take it easy. We open amidst the urban landscape, rain-drenched concrete gleaming under the glow of passing cars. Suddenly, arcs of vibrant yellow lightning snake into view, unveiling a pair of bright golden boots with an electrifying presence. With a swift transition, the camera ascends, revealing the entirety of a crimson-clad figure. Our gaze fixates on the emblematic white and gold lightning bolt resting upon the figure's chest before plunging into darkness with a hard cut to black.